we need to start a cancel Denzel Curry campaign because this dude is getting on my nerves. Every two seconds, it's another, it's another banger, it's another great song, it's another this, it's another that. And I hate listening and then interpreting and then giving my thoughts on his music because all it does is make me come off like I'm just a massive fan. What do you do when somebody just releases heat consistently? You don't, you don't call it bad when it's good. So I want to be disappointed this time around. Make some trash so at the very least people can stop calling me a stan. He also announced a fucking album. It hasn't even been a year since Taboo, and now we got Zoo. Why? So that's where I'm at right now. Um, it's me, Mr. C, it's Curry, with this new track, Speedboat. I looked at the track list, it's coming out next week. Kill me. No, seriously. Blow my fuck- This is not a fucking game. Speedboat! Big chains. Big guns, nigga. I want to know who that voice in the beginning is, because it sounds familiar. Didn't go to college for a free throw. People can't kill through the peephole. Put a mask on like a legend dog. God, fuck. Has this dude ever rapped over a piano before? I didn't make it to 21, so I gotta make it past 24. Big talk. Oh, people. Man, that's before you go to war. That the piano adds, adds like such a somber feeling to this track. Either go to school, go to jail, or the army. Keep a close eye on the things. No, I like this. He's he's talking again about the realities of his environment and, and many of our environments. I think specifically more so talking to, you know, being uh, disadvantaged, disenfranchised as a young black person. He says your only choices are like school, jail, and the army. So it's pretty grim. And like I said, the piano keys in the back, they just like hate they help this track and add to the somberness just like so much more oh wait 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 no nah, that shit's hard pray to god i don't get repo like now that i got some shit my dog didn't make it past 21, so I got to make it past 24. He also says, I don't want to get repo. Like, I don't want any of this taken away from me. I don't want my life taken. I don't want my possessions taken, everything I work for. That's tough. And then it's like a prayer to God to, like, let me keep this. Let my let my people come out of this situation. The hood, that's when I started to jot, not ice cubes get deboed. Run on the street. Ice cubes get deboed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the thing that comes with talking about something like what he's talking about right now is also, you know, it, it's humiliating. You know, it, it, it shows humility, but it also shows insight because you have to be able to understand that just because you know the circumstances of an environment, that doesn't mean that you can safely exist in that environment or is good for you. Like, you know, I, I know a lot of people that think that just because they understand the intricacies and the nature of the street life and the environment that they live in, they think that they could stay there forever. They think that they could just do their thing and not be affected by it. And that's just not true. That's why he makes it a point to say that his dog or his homies or his friends didn't make it past a certain age. So he's got to live beyond that for them. He also says that he doesn't want this shit repo, meaning he doesn't want it taken away from him. He's acknowledging the danger that still exists, despite the fact that he understands it. And that for me, like I said, it, it makes sense. It's, it's hard. It's a harsh reality, but it is a reality. Uh, musically on this track, I think it works just because there is that those piano keys in the background that just kind of add to this very heartbreaking kind of somber feeling. It's got its own momentum and it's still kind of melodic when he sings, when he goes into the hook um, or the pre-chorus where he's trying to say and, and give this prayer and ask God to protect his people. But at the same time, he doesn't want to add to the problem by using his de desert eagle there are these heavier drums that come in when he's doing the pre-chorus i feel like to emphasize the intensity that's coming on while he's praying while he's asking for this thing i'm not supposed to be but like i'm really taking this in because like i said it's it's so relatable in my opinion because while you're asking for something for other people you're still in danger yourself so when those drums come in while he's uh, giving this prayer even though the keys had come just before it it makes me feel like that danger is creeping up on him, even though he's asking for God to protect those people, which is why he ends the pre-chorus with, I don't want to use my Desert Eagle, because I can feel it. I can feel it creeping up on me. Overall, I think I really like the message of this track. Um, I like the, the intensity of it at certain moments. 
um it's definitely a lower energy track than something like ricky you know but i do kind of like that not always going to get abrasive you know very in your face loud instrumentals i don't think we all need that i think a little bit of melody can go a long way and i think it helps in a lot of instances this track i mean i don't know if it's amazing i think it's pretty good and I like, like I said, the message in it is very clear. But if y'all can identify that person that was talking in the background, I feel like I've heard the voice before and it's just not clicking with me right now. Uh, other than that, I think it's pretty good. You know, and the more I listen to it, I think it, I think it's more of a grower than a shower. Don't, don't, don't make me say pause. And that's really all I got to say about it. Um, y'all let me know how you felt about it in the comment section down below and I'll see you next time. I'm out. Thank you for watching.